Okay, hello everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics and vlog number 33, we are talking about cloud-based video production and editing. This is a brand new emerging technology. It's gonna change the industry for sure. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of the companies that are doing it right, some of the companies that um, are just emerging with this technology. And I think everyone who's trying it is doing it right because we've seen uh, industries like the video conferencing industry go from hardware to completely software as a service in the cloud and it's doing everyone a great justice because it's easy, no upfront hardware costs, and you can video conference in the cloud with such ease today. Now the video production industry has some hurdles high bandwidth requirements, high processing requirements, very much customizable and like kind of uh, very high demand on what television producers, live streamers, broadcasters want a lot of control and it's much easier to said than done. But there's companies out there that are doing it and I wanted to respond to this uh, question received by Donnie Campbell who says, I understand there is a device specific software to convert video to RTMP, i.e. vMix, wire, Wirecast, Wirecast Go, the TriCasters, but is there a cloud-based option where I could stream regular video to, the, to a cloud-based server to do this conversion? And yes, Donnie, there are quite a few options, and there's just so many options. We decided to make a presentation, which I'm going to walk you through now to answer this question in detail. We've got five interviews coming up this year with industry professionals around this topic. It's a hot topic, so let's dig right into it. So as the chief streaming officer here at PTZ Optics, I get to live stream and play with technology all the time, and it's really been a dream come true. The industry is so, ch oh, I should just say this really quickly. There is construction going on in this office. You may hear a little drilling in the background. The industry is chock full of industry professionals and the technology is moving so quickly there's always something new to work on. And one of the most rewarding parts of my job is answering your comments on YouTube. So thank you so much Donnie for this, co for this comment. Um, let's first just acknowledge what we're talking about here. So we're talking about real time video editing. So we're streaming and editing at the same time. And real time video editing is a system of editing video where it takes no longer to render the video than the length of the video clip itself. Broadcasters traditionally use large uh, computer systems with real-time video editing with multiple CPUs, multiple gigabytes of RAM, high-powered hard drives. Some have additional hardware components designed to enhance the performance of the video editing software being used. Other approaches to ensure real-time playback include con continuous pl background rendering, using multiple network computers to share rendering load. Wow, that's a mouthful. Sometimes we do take uh, for granted what software like vMix, Wirecast, XSplit, OBS can actually do today. All of that is accomplished with software on a computer. Streaming media is multimedia that is constantly received by and presented to an end user while being delivered by the provider. So those are the two kind of worlds we're talking about here. And if you want to learn more, I have the Wikipedia in the description below. So will video production industry move to the cloud like, vi like the uh, video conferencing industry and so many others? So five professional interviews are gonna help us discuss this topic in detail because every company has a different approach. First of all, we interviewed Rudy Ellis, the CEO of Joycaster, April 15th, and his service takes a single RTSP stream and redistributes it to multiple content delivery networks, effectively allowing you to stream to Facebook, YouTube, um, Dailymotion, Twitch, all of these different platforms at the same time. So it can uh, boost your audience by like 10 times and it's a very awesome platform. We already interviewed him. The link is, is right there and we'll put it below. October 21st, we are going to interview New, New Tech. And hopefully I will get the CEO of New Tech, Andrew Cross, but they haven't promised that he'll be available. Regardless, New Tech has released an NDI, the uh, network device interface, which we're going to talk a little bit about. And that product was all the rave at the 2016 NAB show. And we're going to talk about why that technology is so important to get us into this cloud-based video production world that we want to live in. Um, next, we're going to have John Landon from Teradeck. This one is also tentative, um, but John is a great guy. I've met him a few times. We're definitely going to have him on the show sometime in October. I've slated him in for October 28th. 
one of the best companies for cloud-based distribution and management of streaming technology. They have a new product called the Teradek Core we're going to talk about. Now, November 11th, we're going to interview Mark Gilbert, the CTO of Gallery Siena. Siena NDI is a product that is basically allowing the new tech NDI to be to bridge the, the local area network, the LAN, which it was designed for, and go up into the wide area network, the WAN, the public internet. So that's going to be extremely interesting. I have some information about what they're doing. Then finally, one of the first ever I've ever seen live production editing software similar to vMix, Wirecast, and XSplit available completely in the cloud. It's called Go Easy Live, and we're having the CEO, Philip Laurent, fly out from France to our studios to have a live uh, interview there. So that's going to be really fun. So that's what we have coming up. And uh, those interviews are going to really let us dig into this. This presentation is briefly going to go over these technologies, but the interviews are where we're really going to dig in. So traditionally, video production has always been handled on-site, compressed, and then streamed. I would bet that 99% of all live video production is still done this way, primarily because of bandwidth requirements, the cost of bandwidth, and the video production systems that are just legacy. They're in place, and it really is the dominant way of video production. The major breakthrough announced at NAB from NewTek this year is allows for ultra low latency IP streaming over a local area network. The technology NewTek called the NDI Network Device Interface was released April of 2016 and it's already in the hands of over 1 million video production users. I have the source for that fact below. And we have a whole NewTek NDI playbook that we produced, uh, a episode and a complete guide so you can learn about how this technology technology is being integrated into every major market vertical. Um, here's a little kind of a diagram showing the way it works. You basically have integrated products from VLC to soon a lot of hardware cameras. Uh, Bird Dog has a great solution. vMix, Wirecast has announced that they're going to be doing this. So everyone kind of using the same protocol working over a local area network and allowing TriCasters and any product with integration to not only be a source but be a destination and allow you to basically access all of these um, sources over the network as if they were just plugged in via an HDSDI or an HDMS HDMI cable. So while streaming over the local area network is great, um, here's another kind of bi-directional workflow IP um, software that NewTek is talking about here. Um, ideally, we would really love it if we could stream anywhere in the world, and that's where Mark Gilbert from Gallery Siena says he can help us. In fact, Gilbert wrote me an email saying, we are soon to launch our revolutionary NDI.cloud global IP video service, and I was wondering if you had any common interest with PTZ Optics. Our team obviously responded saying that NDI.cloud, allow, if it allows uh, NDI equipped facilities to seamlessly integrate with other NDI equipped facilities over the wide area public internet, we would definitely be interested. So we scheduled him to be on the show and he told us that they are currently in a closed beta, but they'd love to share more. They've invited us to, to start using it. So we're going to have some videos coming soon. Um, and yesterday we demonstrated the low latency NDI stream over the NDI cloud from Mumbai to New York. So that's 1,200 kilometers. That was something that Mark had done. And uh, th that video, I believe, is, is available on YouTube. So this got me thinking. You know, if, if the entire video conferencing industry has moved to the cloud, why couldn't video production? Some of the best cloud-based services um, are simple for end users with a low monthly payment. And it's just how it works. It's just the, the style of delivery just works and it makes people really jump on board because there's no upfront cost. And XSplit has done a good job of this. I kind of want to mention the fact that they have a low monthly cost to get people in without a high upfront cost. Um, but we didn't mention them because it's not really cloud-based streaming. You do It is a software uh, on a piece of so, um, so computer, but I think they're prime for getting into this market as well. So Go Easy Live is the very first replacement for video editing and live production that we've ever seen. And we are going to uh, interview Philip Laurent, the CEO here, and I really believe he's one of the pioneers of online video editing and production. 
Go, Go Easy Live is a self-proclaimed cloud video editing tool that's made to make live streaming easy. The idea is really simple. You capture live video from anywhere in the world, stream it to their server, and from anywhere else in the world, you can edit it, stream it, anywhere you want, multiple destinations, and it just makes life easy. So currently, uh, Go Easy Live's pricing, let's take a look at some of these screenshots here. Um, I didn't have time to actually get my own screenshot, so I pulled these off the internet. But you can see here that there's a preview. Um, you can add a DVR to record. You can add titles, overlays, Twitter integration, animations, multiple videos. It's almost as advanced as Wirecast and vMix. Definitely very close to what XSplit's doing. Um, stream to multiple areas, ingest IP cameras directly from Wirecast. So you could actually host a show from Wirecast and then send it to the cloud and have them do additional information. So a lot of uh, like, you know, the Go coders and stuff like that. Uh, Flash Media Encoder, Teradex. Now that we mentioned Teradek, let's talk about the Teradek Core, which I believe is really today's most robust cloud-based video distribution solution on the market. And Teradek streaming encoder products allow users to wirelessly stream video from basically any video source, whether it's HDMI or HDSDI, to the cloud over the public internet. And they've been doing this for years. Um, some of the features that this product has is the ability to stream online video platform, multiple online video platforms at the same time. So just like Joy, they basically have Joycaster built into this. So you could stream to Facebook and YouTube and all these different places. Um, you can video archive and have management of all of your software from a nice dashboard application. So it's really, really nice for just getting a high level view of all the different streaming you know, things that you have out there. Um, you can also do IP routing and configuration. So you can actually, you know, route different IP um, streams to different places and that allows you to effectively bring in video sources. Um, and they also have an integration with what they're calling Live Air, which is basically um, allowing smartphones to, uh, to get to uh, stream to the, their Teradek core. So here's the pricing here. Um, now keep in mind that the hardware encoders are required for each device that they're, they're talking about here. So you have to be a Teradek customer and those customers are really purchasing encoders that allow them to wirelessly stream to the world. Uh, they have some really great cellular bonding options and I cannot wait to have John on the show because this is something that people get really excited about. $250 a month for their premium and then $99 a month for their starter package. You can see that you're being charged, you're being capped on st storage and data transfer, which is very similar to the way that Go Easy Live um, has their pricing. I'm not going to release their pricing. I do have some of it uh, for Go Easy Live, just but it's not public and I haven't talked to Felipe about it. Here you can see you've got different Sputnik servers in the cloud that you can manage. You can get live stream status and monitoring for encoders, decoders, and CDNs, even groups. Um, here's some more pictures so you can have you know, all of your videos in storage. Look at all these different channels you can stream to. Wowza, live stream, Facebook, custom, um, you know, all of these, YouTube, they're all there. So one of the things I wanted to look at was, you know, how is this today? I really don't think the industry is ready for this. I think the industry is definitely still um, the best for Wirecast, vMix, TriCasters, and here's why. Because if, if, you, if we're going off of the Go Easy Live pricing here and the Teradek pricing here. So for the first, basically Go Easy Live is gonna charge per hour. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, release their pricing because I definitely think that um, you know I have to talk to Felipe but I'm gonna ballpark it for everybody and we're talking about in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 dollars an hour for the bandwidth and the usage of their servers so for the first hour yeah it's gonna be the cheapest thing out there um, and I basically have Teradek, vMix, Wirecast, and TriCaster Mini here. I'll give you the basic pricing. You know, we're looking at the Teradek cost per year of their basic package. So we're looking at um, $1,200. vMix 4K, which is the $750 version. Wirecast Pro, which is $1,000. And the TriCaster Mini, which is $5,000. So 
the first hour, yeah, sure, Go Easy Live is going to be cheap. But what happens after 10 hours? After 10 hours, we're looking at $1,500, basically. We would be less expensive to buy the Terra deck, but remember, you have to buy those encoders, but you need that anyway. Uh, we're more expensive than vMix, and vMix and Wirecast we can use forever, no cap on usage. And the TriCaster Mini, we're still a little less than. Um, and then I broke this out in a little different look here. What if 20 hours? What if we're using it 40 hours? Now, the Go Easy Live is starting to be way more expensive than even buying a TriCaster Mini, which is a piece of hardware with all of your HDMI inputs, everything you need to stream and record and all of that. So it depends on how much you use it. If you're, if you're a light user, uh, you just have one or two conferences a year that are really important. Yes, Go Easy Live, if we go back, you know, for that first one or two hours, it's going to be really, really cheap, no upfront investment, everything's done in the cloud, super easy. But if you're a heavy user, you know, the hardware-based systems, the investment in software is going to be more, make more sense. So I'll just end on this, really, that the cost of video equipment and the value um, of video content are what's really driving this massive business opportunity for anyone. Uh, you all know about hosting webinars and live streaming. The conclusion is I think that cloud-based video production is about two to three years out. Uh, bandwidth's getting cheaper. Servers are getting cheaper. Once all of that comes together, there's going to be a time where there's no need to purchase hardware anymore. We've seen it happen over and over and over again in the industry. Um, so even though Skype and GoToMeeting have been out for 10, 15 years, it took uh, SaaS, software as a service, video conferencing, it took really until the past, I'd say 2013, 14, really 14, 15, 16, 2016 is where software as a service cloud-based applications started to outpace traditional hardware systems and really just leave them in the dust, crushed the industry. Um, software like Zoom and GoToMeeting at WebEx absolutely crushed the hardware competitors and it will happen to the video production industry. Um, so, you know, it's just not ready yet. And it's going to be a couple more years from what I'm looking at. But our, our interviews with our industry professionals are really what's going to tell. I think that's going to be the biggest thing to look for. The largest trend that we're seeing is build your own live streaming computers and systems. The do-it-yourself projects out there for tech guys that just want to get their hands dirty is absolutely booming. And this Friday, we're having Magewell on our show. They make frame grabbers, capture cards, the things you need to do these do-it-yourself. Do do DIY projects. So don't forget to tune into our next live show. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment below because I love to respond to your comments if you have questions. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.